that how does matter end up on this planet? Mm. So we start with spirit, and then spirit shines. Spirit shines becomes light. All right, so we have light. All of the, the creative books, all the books about creation go first, there was light. Right? And as, like we know from our sun, light produces electromagnetic energy. Is it a wave or is it a particle? But we know that it produces energy, and the energy that our sun produces is electromagnetic. All of our electricity comes from the sun. Electromagnet, uh, electromagnetism, thank you. Electromagnetism produces a sound, right? So first there was light, and then there was sound in the Bible, in the books, in the holy books, in the in the Vedas, in the Quran, everything. Right? Electromagnet, electromagnetism produces a hum, a hum, literally a hum, like the um, Vedas say, an om, right? But if you've ever been near high tension wires when it's really still, you can hear the hum. Mm. All right. Um, if you put, you produce that hum through a speaker and put a piece of paper on it with sand on top, and you'll see that it makes a shape, it makes a mandala out of that sound. You get a pattern in the sand, you know, a beautiful pattern. And it's very complex. So we have shape arising from the sound, and from the shape arises matter, right? That is physics, <laughs> right? <clears throat> and yet, science wants to poo all the creation stories, because that's exactly how matter comes to be, right? <coughs> uh, we have this bright flash, electromagnetism, a sound, and then shape, and shape is matter. Everything on our planet is sunlight. Right? We can look at it like that continuation of matter, or we can look at it like, well, the grass needs the sun to grow, animals eat the grass, we eat the plants, we eat the animals, you know, we are, or oh, none of us would be here if it wasn't for the sun. Mm -hmm. the, the earth is part of the sun that span off is our, and is held in this orbit by the gravity of the sun. Right, it's attractive force. It's attracted to the sun, right? And just like a loving couple, they spin in orbit around one another. And the sun rockets through our galaxy millions of miles an hour, and then we spin around the sun following it, making a beautiful, intricate pattern in space. So the sun is creative. But what this neuroscientist is saying is we don't realise the effect that this creative force has on our body, right? The, so our orifices of our body, right? Mouth, nose, private parts, ears, and eyes. Eyes are an orifice as well, right? And orifices not only give forth something they receive. So what the neuroscientists are now realizing is that light, just the same way it does with plants, produces chemicals that produces matter is that the light that goes through your eyes produces chemicals on the retina that affects the deep limbic system of the brain sends the signals to the pineal and the pituitary gland uh, to produce hormones that affect our mood and everything in our body it gives us our basic signals of waking and sleeping uh, but it also affects through our skin the mitochondria, and I'm always talking about the mitochondria, the, the, the yeah, defenders. Yeah. They are, right? But the mitochondria can't do its job if it's not for the sunlight. So we need the sun on our skin, but we also need the sun through our eyes so that the right chemicals go to our mitochondria in our cells. So I'm simplifying about six hours of lecture <laughs> that I've just listened to by this guy. Uh, he basically is saying the same thing that I have, but he is a gentleman who cuts open people's brains for a living. Right? He does spinal <coughs> surgery, he does brain surgery, and he's going, all of this research that we've been doing is leading us to the fact that all of this bullshit about supplements that we have with food uh, is... Uh, useless if we don't get sunlight. He said your body can't absorb anything from these supplements 
if you don't have the sunlight because you're not receiving the right chemicals in your eye. And he said, people talk about the gut and how we've got to have the right healthy bacteria in our gut. And yet our eye sends these vital signals to our hormones to tell us to be asleep, to be awake, right? And we're not stimulating it the right way. His studies have shown that in well, not just his studies, but he's also quoted a whole lot of studies, that it, since 1896, I, I'm not sure of the date, but since the, the date that the incandescent electric light bulb started to be used in the house, cancer has increased exponentially. And all of these diseases have increased. Things that used to occur in 3% of the population now occur in 93% of the population, right? And he, he said, we can put it down to a whole lot of things. He said in different areas, but the one thing in every area is artificial light. And he said, what happened is that it had an increase until about the 1970s and then it sort of stabilized. And then from the 1980s and the 90s, we've had an incredible acceleration of these diseases. And the reason why he puts it down to is the damage that blue light is doing in our body. Right, so blue light from our computer screens, blue light from our light bulbs. Right, so we have LED lights through the house here, but we have what's called warm red. There's cool blue and warm red. The warm red is what you need. The cool blue actually then. So there's been lots of studies done where they now show that people are losing their eyesight because of the blue light from the computer screens. Right? So um, it's really, really bad for your eyesight. So a lot of companies are now putting filters on their computer screens. And he's saying what it, it's really tragic with the millennial generation is that They'll stay inside, they don't go out, they don't get sunlight on their skin, let alone in their eyes. But on an average, they look at their phone 186 times a day. <laughs> Yet they don't look at the sun once that we need to produce these good chemicals. Right? Well, they don't know. Yeah. So um, he said you can undo and help your mitochondria, even if there's mitochondrial <coughs> damage that produces all of these diseases, crazy diseases that people can't figure out. They're naming new diseases at an increased rate because these are mitochondrial diseases. These are the diseases that are not inherited genetically. They're created because the mitochondria is not getting sunlight. Right? It's getting blue light and the blue light is damaging us. And he basically likens the, the kids, the pale kids to a plant he said, now what happens when the energy inside something drops? Essentially what happens inside, like if you get low energy, in, you injure your ankle, and you get low energy in your ankle, what happens to your ankle? Right, you get low energy in your hands, you get arthritis in your hands, the knuckles will swell. Right? If a sun, a star is dying somewhere in the solar system, what happens to it? gets low energy, becomes a red giant. All right. So what happens to these kids that are looking at their computer screen, not going outside in the sun, not getting the right nutrients? And they swell. And we also have an epidemic of obesity, of people not being able to sleep at correct times because they're not getting the right signals because of the blue light on their retina. Um, and they're also getting all of these weird diseases because these chemicals aren't being manufactured on the melanin sites in your eyes that go straight through the optic centers, straight to the deep limbic center of the brain that tells the rest of your body what to do. And he said, we're getting basically a weak, sickly, bloated, low energy generation right? that can't sleep at the right times. It gets tired when they're away from their blue light all of a sudden. That gets all of these weird symptoms right? because they're not getting sunlight and if you can start to correct this by going out getting the red rays of the sun early in the morning right? he reckons morning light has been proven to be much better than sunset but if you can't get the morning light 
you know, if you're busy in the morning, then at least do the sunset. And I have found myself over the last few months while I've been busy, at least doing the sunset one. Right? But now I'm getting back into doing the morning one and I'm starting to feel the big difference in my energy. Um, yeah, so, you know, Superman. Anybody, anybody like Superman? <coughs> Superman gets his energy to be Superman from the sun. The sun, right? So, with the um, looking at the sun, do you, what about if you quickly look at the sun during the day? That's not good. All right. So, sun gazing is best done early in the morning when we right. want the, we want those red rays. Right. We want the red rays right. early in the morning as it comes over the horizon. Right. Wherever you are, technical sunrise. Right. So you can get an app now that will locate where you are right. and tell you what time local technical sunrise is. Right, yeah. So here, I think local sunrise is about 6.12, Six, yeah. 6.13 mm -hmm. at the moment. But it's about 15 minutes more than that for it to come up over the horizon. Right. But it is safe only to sun gaze one hour after sunrise. Right. So it'd be, it'd be six, um, 6 to 7.13, right, and an hour before sunset. Right. Then you can stare for quite a time. Right. Right. And the protocol that we have is that you start off with 10 seconds and you increase it by 1 to 3 seconds a day until you get up to 90 seconds. But right. when the sun is setting, it's, it's, it's not hard to look at it, does it? No, it's not. Right. So why would you... Why would you worry about a few seconds on that one? Hmm? Why would you not look at it for a few minutes? <laughs> Get your eyes used to it. This gentleman actually calls it sun callus. Oh, you got okay. it. <coughs> that, that's not my phone. Is that somebody else's phone? It's someone's phone. Oh, my yeah. Not these. Yeah. 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 I hadn't heard that word in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's basically sun gazing. So, if you, and, the, and this doctor has been doing um, removing people from RF radiation, right? He's absolutely terrified about what this G5 is going to do to us. But he's been removing people from RF radiation, getting them to have a look at the sun first thing in the morning, and he's got lists of diseases that are getting cured. What's uh, RF radiation? Um, uh, radi radio frequency. Oh, oh. Right. What's the name of the doctor? Do you know what you're Dr. Cruz with a K, K R U S E. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'll put a couple of, of links up on the sun gazing group and then. A-listers recently. Are you in the sun gazing group? I don't know, but I'm in the A-listers. Yeah, well, I'll make sure you're in the sun gazing group. You're, you were talking about how he didn't like 5G and mm. he's really petrified. That's what I was reading the report mm. about. Yeah. His, his concept of how 5G is going to be so damaging to this earth. Well, yeah. and The uh, people on the earth. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, part of He's saying where they've had 5G already installed, like people are getting electrocuted from power poles and and the, the pipes in their house, you know, mobile phone batteries exploding and things mm. like that. Because what happens is they calculate it to be the maximum that our systems can take. <coughs> then you get a sun flare, a solar flare, mm. which surges the energy a little bit and just sends it over the top. Right, um, because you know all of our electricity on the planet is based on solar flare, and what he actually predicts is in areas where the five G network goes in, that we'll start to see like aurora borealises happening in those areas. Right, <coughs> and we wonder why we've got climate change. I'm not yeah. the young kids will be buying a brand new phone. What's the um, yeah. what's the benefit of five G? Is it more bandwidth? Faster, I think. Faster. Faster. Yeah. Faster. And they yeah. can follow us more. Yeah. He reckons, more. They, re they all reckon it's very, it's a lot easier to hack, so I don't know why they're doing it. So, yeah, but, I mean, obviously uh, the bombardment in the human body is going to be insane, insane radiation. But if we've got anything that's electrically conducted around, conductive around us, 
it can just start to heat up. So, like, like a yeah, yeah. So you're just getting you know, anything that's conductive is going to start heating. So he's predicting like massive bushfires and things like that in areas that install 5G. He reckons that that was the cause of the big Californian. Uh, fires that they've just had as they put in the 5G. It wasn't the trees that were burning, it was just the homes <laughs> that was catching mm. fire with the 5G that was in there. So, yeah. So it's, it's, it's scary stuff. They're actually releasing it without thinking it through properly and there's a lot of scientists saying that. So, um, but he reckons, remove, if you've got problems with your health, you remove yourself from your RF radiation <coughs> and then get out he said, it doesn't matter if you have all the supplements in the world, if you're not doing, getting your sun, getting, he said, you, everybody should do a minimum amount of healthy exercise. He said, but if you get your sun, he said, one of the other things he's seen with these people over and over again is they start to lose weight, right? Because the swelling in their body starts to go down. They're utilizing the nutrients in their body correctly. Well, something I read said the sun feeds you anyway. It does. When you do do sun gazing, you do, your appetite certainly does go down. Um, but what he what he experienced himself, he was morbidly obese. He was a surgeon um, working under blue lights in his surgery. And, and when he works inside under blue lights now, he wears these little um, red glasses like uh, the guy out of U2 does. Yeah. yeah. Bono. Yeah, you've seen Bono with his yeah. red glasses? Yeah, because he's got really bad eyesight, Bono. So he, he uses them to correct his bad eyesight. But um, he just would not go into work before a certain time, does his sun gazing in the morning, make sure he doesn't work late at night under blue light. And he lost 70 kilos within five weeks. 70? Oh, 70 no, he was like, he was, like, he was something like 390 pounds. Wow. Like, so, wow, 70 uh, pounds. Yeah. Oh, so, 70 pounds or 70 kilos? I'm not sure. Like, might be might, pounds might if he's a yank. Yeah. That's be. huge, though. It's, yeah, it is. But it was like six weeks. And then after that, six months later, he lost like another 50. That's like 30 <laughs> kilos in five weeks. Yeah. 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 So he's, um, yeah. So, but he, he had this lady who was chronically diabetic. And he showed that you can reverse diabetes with some gays. Arthritis, don't you know. Um, what's the other one that he was? Oh, there was a lady who had, um, she was sensitive to, to electromagnetic radiation. So she was one of these people that were allergic to electricity, yeah, genuinely. And he got her to go to Mexico with him, away, you know, out in the, in the jungle, and they did sun gazing every day. Three days, all of her symptoms stopped. Three days of sun gazing. So, yeah, so it's just nice uh, after 20 years <laughs> of telling people sun gazing is really important to see that there's some scientists who are actually starting to back up yeah. what we're doing. You know, so scientists aren't anymore going, oh, don't do that, you'll go blind. They're actually starting to go, oh, <laughs> look, you probably need to get up in the morning and go and do this because we've discovered this is really good. Hello, it's been done for 5,000 years in India. And there were temples dedicated to sun gazing. There's a, an amazing temple in the Arissa area that I'd love to take a tour to one day. It's got so much advanced technology in this temple, especially with regard to time. Um, you know, some of the, the people, the yogis over there in India reckon it's the, the, not only the sun temple, it's the time travel temple because all of the wheels are all measured out and there's so many measurements and increments of time in there. So, you know, I'd love to go there. love to take a group there and, you know, we'll have a play with that. But, yeah, so I will put some links up over the coming weeks on the different groups to this um, Dr. Cruz, no relation to Tom, I believe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was a really bad joke. But he is a, sci he is <laughs> a scientist, though. Yeah, he is. He is a scientist, but not a scientologist. A scientologist, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so how, how long, how, like, do you... Uh, go on, go on. I'm just trying to think. I haven't been able to do it during the summer because yeah. of where the sun isn't. And I've gone downhill. Yes. And I've 
you know. I I'm feeling it. No, 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 you know. I'm feeling it now too. Yeah. And, and, but this, this was a really hot summer. The sun was getting up really early. Um, there was a bit of chaos. I had that injury with my back. And like with your sun gazing, what you do traditionally, according to the Vedas, is that you do it for three months yeah. and then you stop. Okay. So you do it every day for three months and stop, have a rest for three months, and then do it for another three months. Because winter, winter is just perfect. And winter is when you need it the most because there's less sunlight as yeah. well. It just comes um, right up um, in front of my house. Hello! <laughs> I'm gonna, I've got to get up to the top of the hill here. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I've got to get up to the top of the hill. So if I'm running late, it's like, come on, Meg! <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get up there! Yeah, yeah. No, don't do a poo now! Come on, we got to get there! <laughs> you can wait! You can wait a minute! It's coming in, Mummy! It's coming out! <laughs> yeah. See, like, like Springbrook, that that really nice place we tried to go to last summer and it was yeah. just it was rain or yeah. mist yeah. every time we tried it yeah. and so this year we didn't mm. and you manifest good weather well, <laughs> yeah right because <laughs> you, every time you go there you go we're going to get rain and mist rain and mist you manifest what you get yeah well, well we can probably go soon I, I think we should go soon and the other one is Fran down at um, yeah uh, down at um um, King's oh, yeah, just past King's Cliff. Cabarita. Starts with Cabarita. Cabarita. Thank you. Cabarita. Hey, Fran and Cabarita, we are thinking of you. You should mm -hmm. be here. Mm -hmm. So, Fran still yeah. wants us to go down and do some sun gazing with her, too. Yeah. And you were talking about Byron Lighthouse? Yes. Byron Bay Lighthouse? We can do that. So, yeah. if, we've, if we've got enough people that want to do these things, we'll organise it. I mean, Robin and I love doing it together. Willie's come with us a few times. But it would be nice to get bigger groups to come and do it because it's more fun for everybody. You would only get up to about the crack of noon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually I'm kidding. Talk... I'd get up and out of work. It's been, but... been really interesting because if you leave Ken, he won't get up till the afternoon. I, I don't, you know, to, to hear this guy talking about if you get up at noon, how it, it shocks your system and it's not good because mm. all of a sudden you go from no light in the dark room and then all of a sudden even if you go outside, it's sort of like, ah. Oh. I hate you. When you're up early, you get that gradual integration of the sun into you for the day, and you know it's like really wakes up. No, I'm up early morning. to go to work, but I to, and I go out and sit on my veranda and look at because I can see the sun mm. coming up over the over Stradbroke, mm. and the be most beautiful cloud formations have been happening these last mm. few days, mm. and the sun's been coming up and the light's been illuminating. <gasps> sun photos, um, please. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then it just pokes through, and I go. Yeah, so I mean, you can start with 10 seconds. Start. I'm going to build a uh, viewing platform on top of oh, on that's, roof, why I, that's why I keep saying so that I can watch the sun in the west, east, and west. Yeah, yeah. I, I said that to Ken the other day. I said, if we stay here, if we don't move, I want a viewing platform up on the house. Can I have a viewing platform? <laughs> you know what you do? Yeah. You, can, you can buy industrial, um, people will build you an industrial platform on your roof. Or air conditioning units or heavy objects yeah. like in factories so you can go online because that's what i found <laughs> i'm going sweet now i just need stairs to get up there yeah. they're, they're agricultural they're not pretty yeah right? they're, um, but um you know easy you can get a set oh, of those pull down stairs mm -hmm. what set of those pull down stairs yeah pull down no i'm talking about on the roof yeah. i'm talking yeah. about on the roof so you don't have to um, have an elaborate system. They've got systems for roofs mm. where they can just have angled plinths, whatever that 19 degrees or whatever your roof is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I was Malaysia. actually, it's good you say that because I was looking at the new supermarket they've put down the road here <laughs> and they've actually got like service and air, like air conditioning platforms and they've got these like ladders that they pull down and that they put back up. And I was thinking, gee, something ladders, like that yeah. would be good. Yeah, I'd just have some stairs built, you know, like wooden stairs up. I don't think I could fit stairs in here. In here? Yeah. Well, do you know those circular ones that you can fit in a tight space? No? <laughs> this is really small. No, on the outside of your house. Get a pole and get us all to learn pole dancing and climb the pole. <laughs> okay, no. you teach us. <laughs> you actually talk about, on your videos, you actually talk about um, 
the differences between the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere with spinning. Mm. I wanted to know, are there any other differences? Oh yeah, well when we, we're doing magic, mm. you know, as Annie, because uh, all magic is when we're doing the solar sabbats is sinking ourselves in with the cycle of the sun. Mm -hmm. That's real, and most people, witches, Wiccans, all that, forget that it's sun magic, the sabbats. Mm. We're sinking in with the sun. So we're, we're figuring out where our equinoxes are, we're figuring out where our solstices are. So in the southern hemisphere, obviously, uh, we've just been past our autumnal equinox. But in the northern hemisphere, they've just had their vernal, or their spring equinox. Mm. Right? And same with our solstices. In summer, right, it's December here, so we have our summer solstice in December, but in the northern hemisphere, they have their winter solstice. At Christmas time, you know, so it, it reverses around. Your watch, if you've got an old fashioned watch with hands, not a cool digital one, um, the, the hands actually go clockwise because that's the direction that the sun travels in Switzerland, where mm. Swiss movements were figured out. So you could hold just your watch up to the sunrise, and you'll, you know, you'd see that it's moving sunwise. Mm. Right? So, but in the Northern Hemisphere, if watches were invented by the Aborigines here in Australia, it'd be upside down on your wrist and it would go the opposite way. Right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't go clockwise, it'd go anti-clockwise. Mm -hmm. Somebody actually did release Australian watches for a while, didn't they? Mm -hmm. That went backwards. Yeah. The typical Aussies were always backwards and in the wrong <laughs> spot. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so... It does affect a lot of things, and you really should sink in with it. It's more than um, toilet water spinning down your toilet the opposite well, way. Well, MythBus has proved that's a myth. Yeah, well, have you? I mean, you travel a lot. I travel a lot. Tell me, have you ever done it? Have you ever flushed the toilet and gone, nah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In, yeah in, a, in America, it goes different. It's a different pattern because they have yeah, a bowl full of water. Yeah. So yeah. We, we use a British, British? Yeah. British system. And then German has a different one again. Yeah, mm. so this whole idea of the, it's all got to do with the with geometry the of the bowl and mm. where they introduce juice to water. Yeah. Very, although if you've got a sink, mm. you know, it's um, some people, you know, it depends on the angle of the tap and where the tap's positioned, things like that. Yeah. The Mythbusters, we were very credible, a couple, went and did a lot of experiments and they went, eh, can't prove that that's true. Yeah. But if you if you have just got an ordinary toilet and you're up in a high rise and yeah it will go like we've been in the same building two or three times and it will go different ways in the ways, toilet yeah. in the same yeah. building geometry of bowls and yeah yeah, yeah. so no it's Amount about volume, more than volume of water per the area available yeah. it's all sorts of things going on so it's more than I that. saw MythBuster on it was a, I think it was a joke because it was somewhere overseas and they had this is the equator here yeah. and they had a, a <coughs> bowl on this side and a bowl on this side and he mm -hmm. somehow he made it go the opposite way <laughs> and it was like only three feet apart <laughs> <laughs> with a line down. there's <laughs> one of them underneath going did you say a <laughs> just, no just a bowl, a bowl. Um, yeah just a bowl and pouring water in the bowl doing everything exactly the same but he was like, had a ball oh, look, on I'm the open, side of the I'm open. You know, no, and he made, made it go around. I said, I said, oh, they couldn't you can't do that with only three feet. Yeah. Difference? Yeah. So I don't know how he was doing it. No. Yeah, probably had somebody go around. Yeah, find the spot in Malaysia where the equator is. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, where, it <laughs> that's, that's where it was. I think I've seen that on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. Um, it's yeah. so funny. I yeah. thought, oh, <laughs> so whether it's the southern hemisphere or the northern hemisphere, we just see it for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The sun gazing. Yeah. The sun yeah. gazing. Unless you're in, in the Arctic, you yeah, might I was going to say, in the, in the Arctic, <laughs> it's different. Yeah. You know, you get you start getting above the Arctic, so of course you've got six months of sunrise. <laughs> so the sunrise. Well, you only get sun... to do it once for six months. So. <laughs> yeah. But um, I. Yeah, that's right. So, and he was actually talking about people that live in, in climes where they don't get enough sun. He said if they're sick, then they really should move south, according to him, for a while. Yeah. yeah or north, according or to north us. To, yeah. to this area, yeah. if you're a Victorian. 
Would the full spectrum lights help? Because they use that in Europe. And when I was in Washington, mm -hmm. or in Oregon, mm -hmm. I bought one because I was feeling pretty down because of the mm. blue rays, as you say, because mm. it's raining. You had the, the blues. Time. It's in yeah, talk. No, it, oh, it was yeah. terrible. Yeah. And that's when I discovered yeah, the different sure. rays, how they affect you, was there. Mm. And they actually had sunglasses at a health uh, mm. expo mm. that they had yellow, each ray of our chakras. Mm. And you can feel how they affect your body when you have those glasses looking through your eyes. So I was wondering, would that be oh, yeah. similar yeah. to doing he, the sun gazing? He does speak about that. You know, obviously natural is best. Right. But um, Ken he was talking about his snake because Ken sits a lot where Annie is, mm. and uh, the snake there has uh, special light bulbs that has both UVA, UVB. Uh, so it gives the snake as much sort of natural light as yeah. possible. But even so, you know. Herpetology books say take your sun out, your snake out in the sun as often as you can. Yeah, you know, it's still because natural light is best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what were those lights you were talking about that you've got for the house? Um, just they're just LEDs, but yeah. they're you can warm get warm red. red, warm red. When you you know how you where from? eBay. eBay. So <laughs> not not supermarkets or. Bunnings, bunnings or? Well, yeah, you can get but, cool, um, you can get warm or cool yeah. in, the, in the Bunnings. Yeah. I always go for cool because I like that light, but now it's yeah. going to be going for It, it is cool. easier to see by, mm. but it's not as good for you. <laughs> the light in my stairwell blue, and I went and got two bigger light, mm. and I realised I hadn't cleaned that stairwell for a while. <laughs> 100 water, I'm going, I know how to clean this, I'll just get a 40 water back in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The blue ray. I found that when it was in, in Oregon, a lot of people were really not very nice during the fall mm. and the winter because mm. they didn't have the full sun. Mm. It really affects you. Yeah, mm. it does. Yeah. 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 Cool. And it, that's the other thing you said that a lot of these mood disturbances that we have on the increase, increase of autism. He said that's one of the biggest ones in the last 20 years. It's gone from 3% to 90%. Uh, and he said, yes, you can blame Monsanto and the, um, uh, the immunisation and all of that. He said, but you've also got to have a look at the fact that these kids, and the only, a lot of the time, the only time that they will be quiet is if they're staring at a blue flashing light. TV. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 He said a lot of these autistic kids have been steered into computer, you know, because it looks like they were affected by the blue light while they were in them. And blue light actually get, penetrates very deeply into your skin. Mm -hmm. So he said that up to six centimetres it can penetrate into your skin. Mm -hmm. uh, so, cool. yeah. What about this light? This obviously nice and orange. Well, that's mm -hmm. orange. <laughs> that's that it. wavelength would be cool. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't slept since we put one in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. It's just too bright. Bright? It's too bright. So you need a 15 watt light. Oh, I've got it. At Bunnings they have the 15 models that they're always out because I think everyone buys them. Yeah. The next one's 25 and it's a bit too bright. Mm -hmm. I've, got it. So I've got a little a little crystal light and the smallest bulb lowest, I'm thinking a 15. If there's a 5 I've got it, it got the lowest. And it's right there in the bedroom. I thought it would be something that would really help with the breathing. It helps with the salt lamps. Help with breathing, mm. but um, it's ionic. Yeah, but you yeah. can also get little LED, near warm LED lights for those as well. Yeah. We've got I think an LED one in that one. But you, most often the, the lights they sell you are just oven lights because they have to be able to withstand the. On, yeah. On yeah. I've got a dark cloth between me and the light now just so I can sleep. Yeah, well one of the things that they say is that if you're getting ready for bed, don't try not to have lights next to your bed, don't look at your computer screen, mm -hmm. don't take your phones to bed with you, don't take your iPad to bed, mm -hmm. don't watch TV for a half an hour before you go to bed. Let your your body start to recognise the fact that the light is warm and low in getting you ready for sleep and you know as you can see we know we, we paint the walls these colors in here you know it's called dark saffron 
with these colors. So that it's sunset colors that yeah. sort of say to your body, okay, you're away from the blue light now. You can actually start to relax. And it starts to get you into that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> right. I don't have to be tired. I don't have to be switched on all the time. Like a glass of red. Like a glass of red. Yeah. Yeah. I like, my, I like my future list. But I've always liked the gold and the burgundy together. It's very, um, I like it in my bedrooms to start off with because it's a nighttime. It's romantic. It's nice. Um, but in a lounge room, it just makes you go, you know, some gold and burgundy. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm switching down. I'm switching down. Um, yeah, so if it's too bright, you know, move it away from your bed a bit and definitely do don't. Oh, because I read that it just, it really helped with the breathing and sleeping and it sort of took out all the negative whatever it is so in the air. That, have you got space under your bed? I've got it, I've now got it on the, because I've got my, mm -hmm. I've got the sleep apnea up there. Do you have space under your bed? Though? Yeah, and I put it down, okay, it's down there. there now, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a reflective light. And it cause hits the cupboard door right in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think I've got the curtain, it off. It's supposed to sleep in darkness. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but I was just wondering if, if, I just thought because it's nice and warm, it was the opposite. I've got two in my downstairs, in my downstairs area where I had a, there's a gentleman down there, ghost, and um, uh, he doesn't play up much, but I've got two salt lamps and they're on 24 hours a day, and it just feels good through the house, I don't see it, because I'm upstairs, mm. yeah. so, so um, just, there is a, there is a, that warming effect. We keep if it it's only psychological. Yeah, well, I was wondering if it was psychological because it's just I love no, it. No, but you should be. You should be. You know, dark when you're sleeping. Yeah. yeah. We I'll, have one I'll next take to the it bed. Out. I'll put it in the computer room. Ken switches his off when he goes to sleep. I thought you weren't supposed to because it melts. <laughs> oh, it um, it will attract water. Yeah, yeah. So you do have a little saucer on it. Anyway, so I think we've reached yeah. our natural break. So we'll mm -hmm. break and have uh, a cuppa and then. We'll do a meditate afterwards to anchor some of these ideas. Yeah. So thank you for joining us with the live, but we're going to go and have a cuppa. If you were here, you could have some of the lovely food that's been brought. But anyway, maybe we'll see you next time. So bye. Bye from everybody. Say bye. 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 <laughs>